Hello guys and welcome on back to She's Diabetic. For those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I have been a type 1 diabetic for over 19 years and this is just a channel all about that. My life with type 1 diabetes, tips, tricks, healthy eating, just generally life with living with a chronic condition. So for those of you who are new here, thank you so much for joining. And for those of you who are returning, welcome on back. So I recently posted a video of what I eat in a day, low carb edition. And if you haven't seen it, I'll link it up above. And whenever I post videos of what I eat in a day or anything like that, I get loads of questions about what do you eat? What do other type one diabetics eat? And lots of conversation happens in the comment section of what are people eating? And I think it's such a natural thing because we as type one diabetics naturally are curious as to what other people are eating. It's so inextricably linked with our control and our management of the condition. So this kind of got me thinking and I just kind of wanted to make a very informal video of things that I constantly have in my fridge or are constantly on my grocery shopping list that I have to hand to keep me more or less on track and eating healthily in these days, especially in these days of lockdown and quarantine and less going out for meals and more cooking at home. So I just thought I'd come on here and give you a rundown of these things and why they're always in my fridge and maybe it would inspire you to think a bit differently about what you're packing your fridge with or maybe also please comment down below and let me know what you're keeping in your fridge because that I always greatly appreciate. It's I love to have like a nose through other people's fridges to see what they're keeping in there and what their go-to kind of things are, especially to stay on track and healthy. Those are always really helpful tips. So please, please, please let me know in the comments down below. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So first up, and I'm sorry, there's nothing groundbreaking about this. It's vegetables. It's fresh vegetables and um, I've got carrots and peppers here. They're two of my favorites. And normally what I will do with these guys is cut them up into sticks or buy them in like a stick format and just have them in Tupperware containers and just grab and eat those things. And they are, they just keep me on track. They keep me satiated. Carrot sticks especially, you can get them in crinkle cut sort of discs. You can get them in the stick form. I like to peel and chop these up because I feel like the the full sticks are more sweet. They tend to be more sweet and they are quite sweet, surprisingly sweet. So that kind of satisfies a little something and they're crunchy. So that can oftentimes I find when I'm looking for a snack, I'm really just looking for something to crunch down on. And so it's like, well, I can grab for potato chips or I can grab for carrot sticks. And that might sound like they're worlds apart, but actually in terms of the satiation factor, I find as long as I'm crunching down on something, I'm pretty satisfied. And to do that with a carrot stick or pepper as opposed to potato chips, not that potato chips are bad, but you know, as a healthy alternative of a snack, I find these guys really help keep me on track. Next up on the easy veggie front and all the veg that I feature here, I feature it specifically for the ease of preparation. I have spinach. I really like spinach. I know it's maybe not to everyone's taste, but the way I get a ton of it into my diet is I will take a full bag of spinach, pop it into a large saucepan, cover it with a bit of water, then pop a top on it just to basically steam the heck out of it. This stuff wilts down to nothing. And so you can actually get a lot of it in. And then I just drain off the water, put a little salt, or if you don't want to do salt, you can do fresh lemon, which gives kind of a salty taste. It's very, excellent and then bam you've got your vegetable side and very 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 easily done and i always feel really good for like eating spinach that feels good so yeah bag of spinach always in my fridge several bags <laughs> and still on the veggie theme i always have a lot of frozen veg in my freezer so Frozen veg is great because it is actually tends to be frozen at its peak nutritional place. So it's not like all your veg has to be fresh in order to be like 
primo for you. In fact, I've heard arguments that frozen veg is better for you and it's cheaper. It's cheaper. So like I get these 10 for 10 bucks or something like that over at our local grocery store here and it's just very, very simple to prep. These ones you can actually steam in the microwave. You just open up the corner of it, pop it in the microwave for a couple minutes, pop it on your plate, put a little salt, butter, whatever, and then easy, you've got your veg. I can also sometimes do it in a shallow bit of water and steam it in a pan. But again, these are ways to just get a vegetable side onto your plate in your lunch or your dinner or whatever, and it takes no time at all. It's super easy and cheap. So I think that's important. And obviously any veg is going to be good for you and I'm not saying anything groundbreaking here, but especially with the frozen veg and the spinach, I find those are the two I gravitate towards most because they're most easily prepared. And when they're easily prepared, I'm going to eat them. And when they're not easily prepared, if I have to peel a lot and chop a lot and saute and do this and that and the other, I'm not the type of person that's gonna wanna do that. Some people love it and that is great, but I just like something that's quick and dirty and simple and easy and good for you. So frozen veg, always in my freezer. And speaking of in my freezer, I always tend to try to have some kind of low carb, protein, frozen burger, fish, salmon patty, something like that. What I've got here are these Alaska salmon burgers. They have two grams of carbohydrate in them, so super duper low carb. You can pan fry them, you can put them in the oven. They're very, very, very easy to prep. And bam, that, some veg, some rice, piece of bread. If you're not doing carbs, you want to do like a cauliflower rice side or something like that. This is just, it's an easy, easy start to a meal. Also same thing with like veggie burgers if you're vegetarian, other kinds of frozen meat burgers if not. I just find when I have these on hand, I'm less likely to go out and grab something that's maybe not as healthy takeaway wise or something like that because I know I have these, I know I can quickly build a meal around them with the veg, with the carbs, that kind of thing, and they're really, really satisfying. Some kind of frozen protein meal builder starter, always, 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 always so helpful to me. And speaking of that ready to go meal builder starter, that type of thing, I always have on hand hard boiled eggs. Now, eggs is great in general. They're a very complete protein. If you eat eggs and you like them, then I, I just think they're a really magical way to kind of start a meal or build into a meal. You could even chop up some eggs and put it on top of the salmon burger and then you're like, proteins ahoy. But I particularly like having hard boiled eggs in the fridge ready to go that I can just peel, dip in a little salt or whatever, and they're just great. And a little hack for you is keep an old egg container and mark it with a B. So you can see this one has a B on the end of it, as my mom taught me this trick. What you wanna do is just, just have that to hand. You can boil up a dozen eggs at a time, pop them into your B container for boiled, and then keep them in the fridge, and then you're not boiling eggs every single time you want one. You can just grab one out of your container. They keep for ages and ages and ages. Don't quote me on how long, I don't know, but they're very, very robust and hearty. So I just boil a bunch, keep them in the fridge, and they are good to go. And obviously the last two things I've mentioned, the eggs, the burgers, all the veg pretty much, they're all lower carb choices. Now that's not to say no carbs do I have, because I have a lot of carbs. However, I think it's nice from a type 1 diabetes perspective to have things that are a little bit lower on the glycemic index, you know, spectrum for you to grab and go from because things that tend to be more readily easily to grab and go are things that are higher in carbs. Granola bars, crackers, breads, cookies, cakes, that type of thing. Those tend to be the things that are ready for us to literally grab and put in our mouth. So the more things that are lower in carb that are in that state of grab and go, I find helps support my type 1 diabetes and my staying on track with my numbers as much as humanly possible. 
it's not perfect by any stretch, but that's my kind of thought process. Now moving into the dairy dessert perspective, I don't do milk. I do eat meat and eggs and all that sort of thing, but I don't drink milk for a variety of reasons won't go into it here, but I do a lot of almond milk. So something I always have to hand is an unsweetened almond milk carton. And I normally buy these in packs of six or 12 from Costco or online and get them delivered because they're heavy when I'm living in the UK. But unsweetened almond milk is virtually, it has virtually zero carbs, which is great. And therefore I can make my morning coffees, my teas, I can pour it over some berries to have like a sort of creamy berry something. It's just a great thing to have on hand that I can pop throughout drinks and things throughout my day that is not gonna add carbs. I found even when I was drinking milk, and this is not an anti-milk thing, but when I was drinking milk, it's pretty high in carbs and has a lot of naturally occurring sugars. So sometimes when I was making my coffees or adding that to my teas, I was seeing a rise that I wasn't really able to kind of reconcile because I was like, I just had a drink of something, you know, why should this be raising my blood sugar? So when I personally switched over to the unsweetened almond milk or any other unsweetened non-dairy milk, I've found a great, great sort of overall improvement and makes life just a little bit easier to deal with. So unsweetened almond milk, another staple. And in that same realm, I have unsweetened almond milk yogurts in my fridge too. Those are something that I can add a bit of jam to if I want to, add some fruit to, add some sugar into, or stevia, something like that. Again, very low in carbs. This particular one is a Kite Hill plant-based plain unsweetened almond milk or Greek style yogurt. Very thick, very lovely, but you can get them in a variety of different, you know, versions. This I just happen to have on hand. But this one has eight grams of carb, four grams of fiber. So if you subtract fiber and your carb content, that's four grams of carb. Put a little sweetener in there or some berries, something like that. A very low carb snack. And again, easy, quick, good to grab and go. And one reason I do, you can buy them in bigger vats, but one reason I do like to have them in these smaller containers is it just helps me know, okay, I can look at the label. I can just have this. I know what's in it. It's so quick and simple. And I don't have to weigh anything out or anything like that. So any kind of plain, unsweetened, non-dairy yogurt to have on hand, always a winner for me. And another one I've mentioned there is berries. Just having raspberries, blueberries, strawberries, some kind of berries. First of all, I believe they're superfood, not that I'm thinking that we need superfoods only type of thing, but that's good to note. Um, but berries tend to taste sweet, but they're not that high in carbs. They're, they're kind of more tart than sweet when you actually think about it. But to me, on initial taste, they taste very sweet to me. So they kind of satisfy that sweet tooth desire without being a big load on my insulin needs. So berries, again, have them washed, have them ready to go, have them out on your counter. Sometimes I like when they're a little bit warmer, like set them in the sun for a little bit or something like that, and they warm up. They're so, so sweet and tasty. That's what they taste like, but I don't need a bunch of insulin with them. I think I get that because we used to have a raspberry bush growing up around the corner, and I would take the raspberries right off the bush in the middle of the summer, like when the sun had been shining on them, and oh my gosh, they were so good, so good. <laughs> so yeah, berries, big fan. Again, I know this isn't a groundbreaking concept, but just buying the berries and washing them and having them out on your kitchen counter or right when you open your fridge, to me that just puts you in so much better stead to grab for those things when you want a sweet treat as opposed to grabbing for, you know, cookies, crackers, chocolate, cakes, that type of thing. However, shame on me for saying chocolate because my next one is chocolate. But uh, something that I tend to do is I definitely eat chocolate and I definitely have a sweet tooth. So this is the ideal, but the cookies, the cakes, all that sort of thing, the crackers, 
I definitely have those. <laughs> so please don't think I don't. But these are sort of the, you know, the grab and grow staples. But something I always have to hand, and I like to have to hand so much, is chocolate. This happens to be a Lily's one that is actually sweetened with stevia. So it's very, you know, low carb, diabetic friendly. But also I find if I just have something that's 70% or higher in terms of cacao content, that will tend to be, first of all, lower in carbs and lower in sugar because it's a richer, less sweet type of chocolate. And second of all, I only need a couple squares to get that sort of sweet tooth satiated. So chocolate is something I always have to hand. Somebody actually asked me the other day, do you eat any chocolate? Like asking for a friend type of thing. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? Chocolate? Yes, of course. Of course! Absolutely. And I think there are even some studies that say the chocolate is beneficial for us, so it's best we stock up. And again, mentioning that sweet tooth, I do always have some kind of sweet cookie treat something or other. And yeah, it may not sound like the healthiest thing, but I think sometimes the healthiest thing to do is be realistic and have a healthy version of something to hand because you know you're going to want those sweets. We all do. We're all human. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just when you have type 1 diabetes, the grabbing and going for those things can be a little bit more complicated with insulin needs. So I tend to, these are, these are called healthy vegan bites. They're just an oat-based cookie that has a lot of dried fruits and nuts and some almond flour in it, that type of thing. So they're very high in fiber and not too, too high in carbs, which is great. It doesn't have to be this brand. I got this at the local health food store, but there's loads of recipes that you can make of things that are more almond flour based or something like that if you want to keep them lower in carbs. But I just find if I have something like this to hand, I am able to say, you know what, like I want a straight up cookie. But I'm grabbing for the sort of healthy version of that desire, which I think is always great to have on hand because a lot of healthy eating is also being realistic about what you want and finding healthy alternatives that are going to satisfy you. Or just even having exactly what you want but in a smaller quantity and planning for that by parceling it out into individual snack size containers or something like that. I just couldn't go through this video without mentioning something of this variety because I think it's realistic. It'd be great if we could just say, oh yeah, I just eat vegetables and like, you know, lean meats and that's just like what I have. And then I have a square of dark chocolate and then I go to sleep like with a halo on top of me. No, it doesn't happen like that. So yeah, I, I wanted to be realistic and also mention that I always, always, always try to have something like this to hand just to kind of satisfy that thing. And lastly, and to kind of round it all out, something I've been doing recently is ending my day with a hot water of lemon and ginger within. And it's just comforting and yummy and delicious and has been helping with my digestion and is a comforting warm drink to kind of have on hand. I will cut the lemon in half, squeeze a whole or half of a lemon into hot water, and peel a big piece of ginger, maybe about like that much, that much ginger, peel it, put it into hot water, and just let it stew. I don't even take it out, I just drink it whilst it's in there. Just yummy. Just yummy, comforting, like a warm hug at night. Especially on these cold winter days that we have at present. So there we have it. I don't even know how many mentioned there, probably around like 10, but those are just things that I currently have to hand that I am loving having the capability of just grabbing these things and eating them, building meals around them and building snacks around them and just having these things to hand really helped me stay on track with healthy eating. It's by no means what I eat every single day, my gosh no, but it is something that when I have to hand, 
I'm going to be more likely to grab for and my goodness I'm happy to grab for any of these things because they represent very healthy options in my mind. So I hope that was interesting to you. I hope that was helpful. I hope it kind of satisfied also some of the comments that I was getting in that what I eat in a day video and in other what I eat in a day videos that I've gotten before. So please, again, let me know what are your go-tos? What are your tips and tricks and hacks to have to hand in the fridge that just keep you feeling good and satisfied and give you the best chance possible at good blood sugars? It's not all about what you eat by any stretch with type 1 diabetes, at least I've found. So I'm not saying this is the answer and the be all end all, but what I am saying is it's just helpful. It's what helps me. And with that being said, I wish you guys a wonderful day wherever you are in this world. I wish you great blood sugars, straight CGM lines, all of that good stuff. But most of all, and most, most, most importantly, I believe, I wish you a happy, healthy mind with it all. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Happy, healthy eating!